guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the blogger behind BrighterDarling.com. Today we're doing a very in-depth review on all of my favorite makeup brushes. This is not a curated, minimalistic review at all. If you want something that's really like bare bones, your essential brushes, I do have a couple blog posts about that. I will link them below. And I am trying to speak a little quieter so I hope you can still hear me. I'm filming this while my baby is sleeping in the room right next door. Lord help us. So, um, Anyway, I do want to get into these brushes. I am an affiliate with Sigma, as many people are, but I have been using their brushes for 10 plus years. So the fact that they reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to be an affiliate was just a blessing because I love their brushes already. Um, I will tell you, not all of these brushes are Sigma brushes. There are a wide variety of brands and price points here, so don't think that I'm only gonna be pushing Sigma brushes on you guys, it's not gonna be like that. Um, and I really could care less if you wanted to use my code or not. It would really be great if you did, but I will still purchase Sigma brushes on my own whether or not you purchase them with my link. So just putting out there, if you wanted a little bit of money off of your purchase with Sigma and you wanna help support me, I would appreciate it. The link and the code is in my description box, but again, don't feel obligated to do that. If you like the other brushes I'm talking about, go for it too. Um, also, before we get started, can I just show you this shirt I'm wearing? I love it. It is by Thread Tank. Mm, sort of sweet, sort of savage. This is literally me in a t-shirt. This is my life. If you know me in real life, this is like a perfect example of me. Um, anyway, let's fast forward, get into the brushes. Yeah. The first step in my eye makeup process, because that's what we're gonna do first, we'll get to the face later is transition shades and I have three favorite brushes to do that with. You can call these crease brushes, you can call these transition brushes, big fluffy brushes, whatever you want. But I have three. One's by MAC, one's by Sigma, one's by Bare Minerals. My OG one is actually the Sigma one. It's the one I bought first. It's the Sigma E35. It is a dupe for the MAC 224, but in my personal opinion, um, I don't think they're exactly the same. I mean, they're pretty close, but I think the MAC one is a hair, a hair better and has held up a hair better over the 10 years I've had these brushes. But I mean, if you look at them guys, I've had them for 10 years. They look nearly identical. So save your money and probably get the Sigma one. What I did when I bought this is I bought the Sigma one, I tried it out, I learned how to use it. I really liked it. I got so curious and I wanted to know how the MAC one was. So I bought the MAC one later on when I could afford it. But like I said, these both are my favorites. So it's not like either one performs much better than the other in my opinion. The third one I have here, which is probably the favorite of the three, is this Bare Minerals one. It's called the Blender. And I like it because it's slightly wider and slightly more domed on the tip. So um, I'll put the Bare Minerals one here. Here's Bare Minerals. And then just so you can see the color differentiation, I'll have the Sigma one, which is the white one in the middle. And as you can see, the solid black Bare Minerals one, it's a little fluffier and a little more domed at the tip. So it's easier for me to kind of buff the color through the crease and like all over to get that transition shade really blended well. Moving on to the next step in our eyes. We would then move into like adding a shimmery lid color or just a matte, usually a, a lighter or brighter lid color. And those you're gonna use like flat shader brushes to pack color on. And I have three here as well. I don't have three for everything, just so we're clear. Um, the first one I have here is a Bare Minerals one again. I really have been thoroughly impressed with all of their brush launches in the last year or two. They redid a lot of them, so you're gonna see a few Bare Minerals throughout, just so you know. Um, the next one in the middle is the Sephora one, and this one is actually a MAC one. So that's where we're at here. Um, this is the Bare Minerals Expert Shadow and Liner Brush, and I really like this one because it's multi-purpose. It's great to travel with. It has the flat shader brush, shader on the tip, and then on the other side it has a angled an angled brush. Sorry, it's been hard to say that, um, which is really great to either use as like a powder eyeliner, or you can even use this as a gel or cream eyeliner. Um, brush or to fill in your brows. So I really like dual sided brushes for travel and this is a good one. The, the other two I had mentioned are the MAC one. I think this is a two, 224 or two something. The number has come off, 263. I will figure it out. It was a popular one years ago when everybody was like 
obsessed with brushes. Um, so this MAC one and the Sephora one. The difference here is the size. As you can see, the Sephora one is the brown one and it's smaller compared to the MAC one. I like this one better personally for my eye shape because I have semi-hooded lids and I don't have as much lid space. So if you have smaller lid space or hooded semi-hooded lids, this is a better option I personally feel because you don't need a big paddle on your eyelid. I can still use this one, um, but if you want to know my preference, I personally like this one better for me. If you have um, less of a hooded lid, you totally can go for this MAC one. It's a wonderful brush. Again, I've had this MAC brush for a good 10 years. I purchased this with that first MAC brush that I showed you, the yeah, 224. Those are my first two MAC brush purchases ever of my life. And they're still in my collection and still very loved. So um, that's my thoughts on my three favorite shader brushes. Um, oh, worth noting, all of these are natural hair. Um, the difference with natural hair and synthetic, and that's throughout, is natural hair brushes are going to be easier to pick up product. Um, they like, it sticks into the brush better. Uh, synthetic hair brushes are better for liquids and creams. So think powders and things you really want to like pick up a lot of product with, whereas your synthetic brushes are better for liquids and creams, although they wash better when you're like rinsing out the products that you have used on them. So to touch on synthetic brushes, I do have two here. I don't use these terribly often, um, but I want to mention them because like I said, this is an in-depth review of my top favorite brushes. I have two, both of these happen to be by Sigma. One is their large shader E60, and this one is their um, cream color E58. So as you will see, there's a difference in size in these two. The um, large shader E E60, sorry, I think I'm gonna say E50, but this is the E60. I do use this when I'm using like a really shimmery or glittery cream or liquid shadow on the uh, lid here. Um, or if I wanna just like do a huge wash of powder color, but more often than not, it's like a cream, liquid, glittery, that kind of a shadow, that's what I'll use this for. This smaller one, I actually use mostly to if I ever carve out my brows. I don't normally do that, it's just not something I have time for in my routine anymore, but before I had a baby, there were times I would do that and carve out the brow with this uh, brush. And I like this one again because it's a little tinier, um, not as big and bulky, and it's easier to really like carve out the brow area and then clean up like the top of your brow when you're um, filling them in and whatnot. So um, if you're looking for a good brush for that, the Sigma Cream Color E58 has been a favorite of mine. Okay, uh, next is a smaller blender brush that you want to like apply more precise darker colors like in the outer corner or maybe a little bit in the crease. And for that, oh my gosh, this is a Sigma brush, it's old, it's the E25. Um, you cannot even, I probably, you probably won't even be able to see it on camera, but it's an E25. This is the Sigma E25. It is a dupe of like a MAC 236, I don't know, one of those popular MAC ones, but out of the two, which I have the MAC one, out of the two, I like this one better. Um, it's a little wider than that MAC one for whatever it's worth. I tend to reach for this one more, so I did want to include it as my top favorite, plus it's a little cheaper, so hey, there you go. And oh, just to make sure you guys know, I do use this when I put like darker color out on the outer crease or like slightly here to deepen things up. Okay, the next one is a pencil brush and I don't really use pencil brushes for um, what you typically see people use it like smudging la um, shadow on the outer lash line. I mean the lower lash line. Sometimes I do that. You won't really find me using it for that. I have other brushes that I use for those things and I don't really have a favorite in that category, hence why you won't find one in this lineup. But um, what I do use these for is actually, since I do have hooded lids, I use them to really concentrate dark shades on the outer half or in my crease. Um, I also use this for highlight in that inner corner. So I'm sorry, did I even say what this is? <laughs> it's the Sigma E30. The Sigma E30 is their pencil shadow brush. And again, I've had this one for a million years and I really like it. Um, okay, do I have something on my lip? Sorry, if I've had like a black dot here and you see that, whoops. Okay, now we're getting to some more specifics. So um, brows and eyeliner. So 
If you are someone who likes to do liquid or gel, um, not liquid, but like gel or cream eyeliner, I personally cannot think of a better brush than the MAC 236. I'm sorry if I said 236 earlier. I can't see the numbers anymore, but this is the 236. Um, it is a angled liner brush. Now they, MAC makes a few angled brushes and some are, some they do recommend for eyeliner. Personally, when I first went to the MAC store asking to help them, help me, have them help me find a, a liner brush, they recommended a different one. I don't remember the number, but I don't like it as much because it's thicker and I want to say it's like a natural hair brush. So I have ha worked with makeup artists before who have asked me like, what are you using for your cream and gel liner? Cause it comes out really nice. And I've told them this one and they're like, Mac told me to get this other one. And I forget what the number is, but don't use that one. You want the 236 because it is extra, extra thin. You're not even gonna be able to probably tell on camera how thin it is, but it's also a synthetic brush. And again, if you have hooded or semi-hooded lids like me, you don't want a big, thick black line or brown line, whatever color you're using as your eyeliner. You don't want it th thick. You need a thin line because we already barely have lid space showing. I use this in my pro kit as well. So even if you have clients that have bare lids, this still works wonderfully because you're not gonna overdo it. It's easy to build it up. I also find it's easy to do a wing with this because it's nice and soft and flexible, the tip. Um, there just is no better cream gel eyeliner brush that I have found and I have several. I have some from Sigma, I have some from Aesthetica, I have some from, what's that, uh, Real Techniques. This is the best one when I need to really get it right. I use this on my wedding day. Again, another one that's really old. I've had it for probably 10 or 9 or 10 years. Great. MAC 236. For brows, um, this is the brush that I use in my Pro Kit for pomades and powders, if you like are someone that doesn't use a pencil. Um, this is an Anastasia, I think it's her number seven. Again, I use this so much, the number and the name has worn off. I have two of these. The other one is somewhere in my room, which is a mess. Um, but I really like this because unlike this eyeliner one that I just showed you from MAC, this is stiff, very stiff. This one's very soft and flexible. This is stiff, so it's good to get that pomade very specific. I used it today to do my brows, which I used um, Dip Brow. Um, and I also really like this bully on the end. Nice and compact, nice stiff bristle brush, and it's not too wide. That's again, another thing. If you have too wide of a brush when you're doing brows, you can go out of the line, it becomes too thick, you're like overcompensating and your brows go real haywire. So this is what I like for brows. And last but not least, when it comes to eyes, this is like a finishing step or like a last touch. Um, it's like a weird hair growing out of it. <laughs> Not to be confused with a Jaclyn Hill lipstick. Um, this is just like a random like hair actually in the bristles. But this is the Bare Minerals Shade and Diffuse Eye. It's a dual fiber and a dual fiber means that it's like the ones that have the white on the edge and the brown on the bottom. It just is a softer application of color for any category of brush, whether it's a face or an eye brush. Um, what I like to use this for is to just buff out color. So, you know when you do like an eye look and you feel like your crease looks really harsh and it doesn't have that pretty fade? I think that's something that a lot of people go for. And like sometimes you might go a little heavy on the crease and then you're like, what happened? My eyeshadow doesn't look as blended. I really want that pretty gradient, that fade. This can kind of fix that if you want a little too ham. Um, I personally just like to use it because I do think it just gives like a better finish. Um, and I just go through the crease and up through the up to the brow and kind of just buff things through and it just softens the overall eye look. And you can also use it on the lower lash line if you put like dark shadow here and you want to just like diffuse it so it looks a little blown out. This brush is awesome. The Bare Minerals Shade and Diffuse Eye. Okay, so those are all our eye brushes. Now we're going to get into some face stuff. Um, I want to start with my two favorite foundation brushes. These are by Sigma, my OG, and you'll find this in like, I don't know, 95% of my foundation reviews. This is the Sigma Flat Kabuki F80. It's a tried and true. You'll find it on so many people's YouTube videos, and it's great because it buffs foundation on quickly without streaks. Now, um, before pregnancy, my skin was oily, and I was able to use different foundation brushes, like thick, fat brushes like this, without a problem. As my skin got a little drier during pregnancy and after, it got a little more difficult and I noticed that certain brushes 
started to leave streaks and it was funny because I had some friends that have dry skin always say to me uh, does that F80 leave streaks because other brushes that are like this from other brands leave streaks and I never really understood what they meant until my skin was more dry this one doesn't leave streaks so if you are curious and you haven't tried it yet the Sigma F80 is amazing I recently um, picked up the Sigma 3D HD Kabuki I think this is it says 3D HD Kabuki, but I could have sworn it was called the F84. I could be completely wrong. I could have sworn that was what my water said. But the difference with this one is it's like angled at the top here, whereas the F80 is totally flat. What's nice about this one, different from the F80, is it's good when you're like doing your foundation around your eyebrows because it won't mess up your brows or get too much foundation on your eyebrows when you're doing them. So let's say you're someone who does your brows before you do your foundation. This is easier to get around and not mess up your brows than this one. It's also good to get the foundation in the creases and the crevices of your nose and your chin. Um, I don't know. It's just, I find that, oh, and under the eye, like when you're like rubbing foundation or whatever under the eye, or you can use this for concealer too. Um, it's a little more precise. I use both of these interchangeably. I don't prefer one over the other. It just depends what you, you know, find appealing. Both of these are great. Don't leave streaks. Love. Next, we would get into concealer. So the concealer brush, I've talked about this on my blog more than once, probably on my YouTube channel as well. Um, this is my all-time favorite concealer brush. I haven't tried anything else because I honestly don't think anything else could be better, but if somebody knows otherwise, let me know. Uh, this is the Sephora Pro Airbrush um, 57. I thought it was the 98. Oh no, that's, not, that's another brush. Okay, so this is the Pro Airbrush Detail 57. This is what I like to call your finger pad in a brush. So um, I forget why I started, I bought this, but whatever. The point is it's awesome. Um, this is great for concealer under the eyes, spot concealing blemishes. Um, I even use this to put like eye primer on my lids sometimes. I like it because sometimes I just don't want to get concealer on my fingers and like Put it on my hands at all like i just hate that feeling of makeup on my hands so you can just like put your concealer on with your doe float applicator and buff this out it gives a much fuller coverage finish than like a beauty blender or a beauty sponge um but sometimes you really need that it also doesn't leave streaks blends in really er as the name says, like an airbrush finish, and I just love this. I talk about it a lot. It's the best concealer brush I've ever, ever, ever used. So whether you need under eye concealing or spot concealing, this Sephora Pro 57 is the way to go. All right, uh, next is powder. So I love this brush so much, and I'm so sad every time it gets dirty because I have to rewash it and use other things in the meantime, and it's just never as good. Another Bare Minerals winner. The Bare Minerals Supreme Finisher. It is a ginormous, super velvety soft. It feels like the It Cosmetics brushes, and I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure this is cheaper than them. And it's beautiful. It is so soft, feels like heaven on your face. It gets powder all over your face and sets your makeup so fast. Um, I have nothing but wonderful things to say about this. There's not much else I use it for other than all over face powder and I just love it. So again, the Bare Minerals Supreme Finisher Brush, soft, picks up product beautifully, and yeah, that's, that's all you need, right? Okay, so for blush, I have one main favorite, um, and I've had this for so long, and I wanna, it's probably dying, guys, and I say it's dying because it sheds a lot now, and I never did that before, but I've had it again for like 10 years. This, maybe even longer, actually. I got this in college and I graduated college 2007, so it's old, but it shows you it holds up. When you take care of your stuff, it holds up. This is, I don't, they know, it, bleh, <laughs> they definitely don't make this anymore in the, in the pink with this style, but I believe they still have this brush and it's the angled natural blush brush. This was one, number 131. Um, I don't know if the number ring is the same, but I used to freelance at Sephora and I know that they still have this brush. It's just in a different ferrule stick, whatever you call it. Um, but I love this brush because I don't know. Like for instance, there's something different about this. This is the Sigma Large Angled Contour F40, which I do use for bronzer. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, but it's just a little different. It's a little wider than the Sigma, which is the white one. So it's a little wider, a little more dense and stiff. So like it's easy to like 
pop color on your cheekbone. I don't know. There's something about this that I just love. I have nothing to say to justify why I love these so much, you guys. Like some, some of them I just love because I love them because of the way they apply product. And that's really all I can say about this one. It just applies blush really well for me. Doesn't um, like stamp the blush on. Sometimes brushes can like, like the color will just stick in the one spot. This one like buffs it better. I guess that's the way I can say it's different. But anyway, that's that one. Now let's get into contour brushes. I have two favorites and they're very different. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's do this one first. Now I don't think Morphe even makes this one anymore. So I will link to a couple that are very similar that I've seen and touched in stores that I think um, would perform exactly the same based on how they feel and look. Um, but if you can find this one, it's the Morphe MB33. It's good, but I will say the ferrule is a little loose, and I don't use this one terribly often, but it's good. You just have to be careful because it's cheap. That's all I have to say. It's a cheap brush, So, um, but the purpose is good. So this is a big, thick fan brush, and this is what I use when I really want to like shave five pounds off my face. <laughs> so if you've ever, like, I don't know, see me in real life, I don't really know if this is something that people think, but... If you ever see me in real life and think, oh, her contour makes her look thinner today, or I don't know, she looks thinner today. If you ever think that about me, it's probably because I used this with my contour powder. Um, and I like it because it's quick, man. Like, this will bang out a chiseled face like that. So you could just take your contour powder and you do your forehead, one, two, three. Your cheeks, one, two, three. Um, bang it under your nose are right here under your lip and then this is what I love it for the most is that jawline. It just gets the jawline intensely but flawlessly and that is why this brush is so clutch and if and when it does finally break off which will probably be like any minute now because it's just cheap. I keep saying it because it's true. Um, I would get a better quality version of this brush because it's so good for that purpose. Um, for a more everyday casual contouring, you have you can't go wrong with the Sigma Small Contour F05, another one I purchased years ago on my own. Really love it. I love the little ball tip kind of style of this brush, and it's the same idea. You know, you can use it up on your forehead. It's really good at your contour line. Same thing under the lip, and then on the jawline. Serves a very similar purpose. Um, it's just more of a subtle finish. So if you're not like so into the intense contouring, don't go for this style. You can go for this one instead. It's the Sigma F05. Okay. All right, we're 24 minutes already. Okay. Um, bronzer. So regular bronzer. Those two brushes were contour based. So like a more neutral, cooler tone contour colors. This is for a warm bronzy look. Um, I do use the um, Sigma Large Angled Contour Brush F40 and this stick is a little, this stick, whatever, what do you call this? Handle? Um, is a little different than the other ones. It's It was the Camilla Cabello, no, Camilla Ca, Camilla Col, Colho? Coella? I don't know. She's a YouTuber and a blogger. <laughs> Um, and she did a collab with Sigma and like Sigma had this brush on sale so I picked it up when it was on sale. So see, I buy them on my own. Um, but it's still just the F40. They have this in different versions. They have it with a, you know, copper handle. They have it with different color handles, whatever. This is just the F40 and I like this for bronzer. It's a little flimsier than the blush one which is why I like it better for bronzer because you can be a little looser with it. It'll like kind of apply it less precise. Like blush, I like to put it per more precise. Bronzer, I'm a little more free with, and I don't mind it kind of going a little wider on the face, if that makes more sense. Um, and I just really like this brush, so that's all I have to say about it. And the price point's nice. So, okay, we're almost done. Three more. Uh, the next one's my highlighter brush that I've talked about on my blog and my favorites before. I've used it in videos before. I don't use any other highlighter brush. And again, if you think that there's a better one than this, definitely suggested to me, but I swear by this one, I don't think there's any other better highlighter brush. People like those fan brushes. I personally found that like on my slightly oilier textured skin, fan brushes like are such a subtle, it doesn't apply the highlighter as concentrated as I want it to be, 
because I'm the type of person that will apply, and as you've, you've probably seen on videos of mine, I apply my blush, bronzer, and highlight a little heavier upon initial application, and then I do something at the end that kind of just buffs it all out. Um, but I find that when I apply it a little heavier at initial application, it lasts longer throughout the day. Um, if I just want a little flush of a fan highlight, that might look pretty for YouTube, but it's not going to last in real life. So I like this brush for that purpose. And this is the Sephora Pro Highlight 98. This gives me a more concentrated highlight, but it really gets it into my skin better. A fan brush, I just feel like, is like somebody took a feather duster and dusted my face really quickly and like that's it. Like it's like somebody went, there's some highlight. This like applies the highlight, like where you want it and how you want it. So um, I really love this one. I also use this a lot as eyeshadow, like when I'm just doing like one swash of like shimmery sh color on my lid, I'll use this. I love this brush so much. It's such a good friend of mine. I highly recommend you try this brush if you find that highlight doesn't last on your face or you don't really like the way the application of highlight looks when you use those fan brushes or other kinds of highlight brushes. The Sephora Pro 98. Okay, last two. Um, this one is my favorite mineral foundation brush. So if you're somebody who really likes powder mineral foundation or like me, you use it a lot in the summer. Um, this is a newer one again by Bare Minerals. It's the Bare Minerals, a beautiful finish brush. Um, it has like this cutout in the middle. I don't really know what the purpose of that is. I really don't care. I like it because it is so silky soft. Again, like that one that I showed you before, the big fluffy powder black one. When Bare Minerals first came out, shout out to all of you who were like me and ordered it from QVC when we were in college or younger, um, or whatever it was, HGTV, whatever. H not HGTV, HSN. <laughs> um, their brushes were a little rough, and I think they still sell those, like OG um, natural bristle brushes, and I didn't care for them. If anything, actually, I feel like those Bare Minerals brushes irritated and broke out my skin, which was totally not the point of using Bare Minerals, like a cleaner beauty brand. These new brushes are freaking fabulous, and this one I can't say enough good things about when it comes to mineral foundation because it really picks up the color well, holds it well, and it glides on your skin like butter. It makes the powder foundation apply like a cream almost, whereas when you're using those rougher brushes, it just irritates the skin, at least if you have sensitive skin like me. So the Beautiful Finish Bare Minerals brush is my go-to for a powder, uh, powder mineral foundation. And lastly, you've seen this probably before on my channel, it's a Morphe M406. Again, this is a cheap brush and when this brush goes, I will definitely order a similar Sigma brush. Um, I just bought this to try out this style of a brush and see if I liked it. And now I will upgrade to a better quality because again, the ferrules get real crappy on the Morphe brushes. I'm gonna be honest. Um, they're a good way to try out things, but if you want things to last and you don't want to waste your money, don't buy the Morphe brushes. So anyway, this is the Morphe 406, and I do really like it. It's a dual fiber, so that's, again, it's that softer application of whatever you're using, but I don't use this to apply anything. I use this at the end, like I was saying before, to buff everything on my face out so it looks airbrushed and refined and blended. Um, so again, I usually apply a heavier contour blush and um, highlight and then when, it, when it's had like a moment to set on my face while I'm doing the rest of my makeup at the very end of everything I will buff it all out with this to just blend everything out and make sure there are no harsh lines and it does a wonderful job of giving a more natural finish to the color on your face like the blush and the bronzer and stuff so that is all of my makeup brushes that I really like do I use these every day absolutely not no freaking way not possible or necessary but for the things that i mentioned like the purposes of them these are the ones i go for when i want the best application so now you have all of my secrets run amok and order whichever ones you like i will have everything linked below i hope you guys found this helpful i probably said that like 15 times but if you did please give this video a thumbs up if you're new to my channel i'd love it if you subscribed and uh yeah i think that's all i have to say i hope you guys pick up a couple brushes that I like. And if you do, let me know if you love them once you try them. Have a good one.